This is part 7 in our series of lectures on section 4.3. In this lecture we define what is meant by a bijection and we give a few properties of it. Here's the working definition of bijection. If we have a function f from set a to set b, then we refer to it as a bijection, or we also refer to it as a one-to-one -one correspondence if it is both an injection and a surjection. So if your intention is to prove that a given function is a bijection, you would have to show these two properties. You'd have to show that it's an injection and it's a surjection. And um, typically speaking, normally speaking, you would have to uh, apply the working definitions of injection and surjection to that function and prove that they are true. So here's an example of a bijection. If we define f from n cross n into n by... Um, f of m comma n equals 2 to the m minus 1 times 2n minus 1, then that is a bijection because we proved the surjectivity and the injectivity of this function um, over the course of two, two lectures. So here's a theorem in which we show how injections, surjections, and bijections um, relate to composition of functions. So we give ourselves three sets, a, b, and c, and we give ourselves a function f from a to b, and then a function g from b to c. And we'd like to know um, that if we assume certain conditions on f and g, then do we have a similar condition for the composition of those two functions? So in the first theorem, we show that if f and g are both one-to-one -one functions, then f composed with g is necessarily one-to-one. -one. In the second theorem, we do this similar thing with surjections. If f and g are both onto functions, then the theorem asserts that the composition f composed with g is also onto. And finally, if f and g are both bijections, then the theorem asserts that f composed with g is a bijection. Now I'm only going to do the proof of uh, 1 and 3, and I'm going to leave 2 as an exercise for you. But uh, in, in number 1, the way one does it is, you assume that f and g are injections, but you won't use those facts until you actually need them. Your intention is to deduce that f composed with g is an injection. And therefore, you should directly try to apply the working definition of injection to the function f composed with g. And you should see what it takes in order to achieve that. And along the way, you'll make use of the fact that f and g are both injections. So what I want you to do is put your video on, pause, and see if you can write the proof of this. So just simply go through what it would mean um, to say that g composed with f or rather, f composed with g is an injection. Read the working definition of that statement from left to right and see if you can write a proof of it. And as you do that, you'll be, be allowed to make use of the fact that f and g are themselves injections. So see if you can write down the proof. It's just a couple of lines long. Okay, so here's my proof. It's perfectly straightforward. We suppose that f and g are both injections, and now my intention is to prove that f composed with g is an injection, and so the working definition of that tells me that I should give myself two points, x1 and x2, in the domain of f composed with g, and I should assume that the values of f composed with g at x1 and x2 are both the same. And then my intention is to ultimately deduce that x1 and x2 are equal. If I can do that, then I've shown that f composed with g is an injection. So we know that this condition implies that um, g of f of x1 is equal to g of f of x2 because that's what is the value of these two things here. Well, I've now got g of something is equal to g of something else, and since g is an injection, that means that these two arguments, namely f of x1 and f of x2, must be the same. 
So it follows that f of x1 equals f of x2. But now I use the fact that f is an injection. I've got f at one point is equal to f at some other point, and therefore since f is injective, it follows that x1 equals x2. Well, so that's I've, I've carried out the working definition of injectivity for f composed with g. That implies that f composed with g is an injection. So I'm going to leave the proof of the, the corresponding proof for surjectivity to you to do, and uh, you, you'll follow a similar pattern. You'll assume that f and g are surjective, but you're not going to use that fact until you actually need it. You'll directly um, use the working definition that f composed with g is a surjection, and you'll see if you can prove that. Now, of course, part 3 is, is immediate from parts 1 and 2, because in order for f composed with g to be a bijection, it just simply means that it, it is both an injection and a surjection. So that completes the proof of this theorem.